What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Saturday, so time to go over the biggest ADP changes of the last week. We're in the slow part of summer. Uh, camps aren't gonna start until around like mid-July, so there's not gonna be like a whole lot of news impacting things. That does not mean though that the ADPs are stagnant, so still plenty to go over as far as that is concerned. A quick shout out, the auction targets page is now officially live, and the three wide receiver rankings are probably up when you guys are watching this, but if not, probably sometime on Saturday, um, maybe it pushes into Monday, but I'm pretty sure on Saturday, those will be live as well. So for those of you who have been asking, how do things change in three wide receiver leagues? There you go. The rankings are assuming you're in a three wide receiver league in every scoring format. So with that out of the way, let's talk about some uh, movement this week. The biggest riser uh, is actually Gronk, which is hilarious because he was the biggest faller last week. And it's extra funny because Breit is the third biggest riser as well. Somehow now going in the 14th round. I had the exact same advice I did last week. Nothing has changed. Uh, people, I don't know, P people are being weird with the news. Um, it's the same thing with Gronk. It's like if you don't think he's actually retired and you want to take him the last round, go for it. If you're going to really push that into not the last round, it's a little bit aggressive. Remember, he is retired. Uh, but, you know, last round for Gronk is totally fine. For Brait, I just wouldn't touch it at all. I don't understand why his ADP keeps going up. For the crowd that thinks Gronk returns, well, Brait's a terrible pick. And even if Gronk doesn't return, like, Brait not even, might not even be, like, the number one tight end on the team. He's not going to have some, like, massive target share. He's just, he's simply not a good pick. Again, if you want him in the last round, that's fine. But if he's in the 14th round now, absolutely no. Second biggest riser this week is Mark Ingram. He's up two rounds into the 16th, becoming a trendy late round pick. Now that Alvin Kamara is probably going to miss about a month to a month and a half at some point in the season. Um, basically, people are thinking like, oh, well, when he was on New Orleans in the past, every single time Kamara missed time, you know, he was great. He was a running back one. Here's something I'll caution, though. I mean, Ingram is turning 33 in December, and he's coming off a season where he averaged three and a half yards per carry. Like... If Kamara is suspended, then I would be pretty surprised if they just all of a sudden went back to featuring Mark Ingram. It's been a while since they did that. It's been a while since he's been good. There's still a chance they trade for Ernest Johnson. They could trade for Kareem Hunt, although I would guess Ernest Johnson is probably the one that they would end up trading for. So instead of betting on a 32 to soon be 33 year old running back that hasn't looked good in recent years, I would rather take a shot on someone like to Ernest Johnson who has actual like legitimate upside in any games that Kamara misses. Like if they actually did end up making that trade, Turnus would be incredible. He'd be fantastic in fantasy. I honestly cannot say the same for Mark Ingram. I really don't know what they would do, but I don't think it would be time to feature Ingram. So I think people are hyping him up a little bit too much. I don't see a world where he goes back to his like 2018, 2019 numbers. Uh, running backs really fall off when they hit 30 and you know, he's turning 33. So it's a no for me for Ingram. I understand the hype, but if you're really hyped about it, go to Duran Shonson. Marlon Mack uh, once again makes the list. People are, I think, really buying into the offseason report that he's going to kind of open the season as the 1A, maybe close as more of the 1B, up another nine spots into the 15th round. I, I really just don't have much to say here. Like, I, I understand the rise makes sense. Um, I don't doubt the upside. Like, if they're going to give him, you know, 1A workload, he's going to outproduce you know, 15th round ADP. So I'm perfectly fine with him in this range. I just wouldn't be too aggressive because remember, he's a, we're going to say a mediocre running back on a below average team. I think, you know, Davis Mills could actually be kind of solid, but I, I don't think it really matters how good he ends up being. Like it's a below average team. They're not a great team. So mediocre running back, below average team. Uh, they did draft a rookie. They're going to use the rookie at some point. He's fine. He's a fine lane route pick, not someone I'm just like, you know, over the moon about grabbing late. Uh, other players up, half a round. Austin Hooper, Gus Edwards, Mac Jones, uh, Gerald Everett, and Carson Wentz. Hooper and Everett are up because there's pretty much only been positive reports about them. Hooper, you know, saying that Tannehill really likes targeting him, kind of being like a security blanket. Uh, Everett going to be using the, like, the screen game on end arounds, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we don't really know how true both will end up being, but it's not very difficult, I'll say, to hype up a late round tight end. Like when you're in the range that these guys are going, which is Hooper around the 16th round, Everett around the 14th round, 
listen, they, they just have to have some sort of role in the offense to be relevant. So I don't think it's crazy these guys should be going up. They are players that I do think you should be taking shots on late. If you're in a redraft league, you want to double dip on late tight end, or you just want to draft a late tight end, totally fine. If you're on underdog, you want to take three tight ends, make this your third, totally fine. So I was like, I have absolutely no problem with these rises in ADP. I think both are going to be involved in their respective offense. I think both will be inconsistent, and both will you know not have a crazy high ceiling. So they're not like, you know, neither of these guys are going to be weekly tight ends that you're like consistently starting but i think both are absolutely fine for what you're getting for them like they're just late round picks totally fine seeing them rise don't rise too much i would say for everett pump the brakes a little bit if he starts getting to like the 12th 13th round you know it's gerald everett right uh but for for now it's fine uh Wentz, i'm sure is up because mclaurin signed but like we knew mclaurin was going to sign so I, I don't think this rise makes a whole lot of sense that was always going to happen if you were really discounting Wentz before that, like that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but that's really the only news. So it's got to be just because McLaurin signed. Uh, but it's not like he's, you know, all of a sudden a 10th round pick. Like he's just still a late round flyer as well. Mac Jones also up. This one I have no idea about. Like no, there's no news out of New England. It's like, oh my goodness, got to draft Mac Jones. Um, he's not really someone that I would want. Maybe an underdog if you're going for like you know, a, a Parker or a Kendrick Bourne or a Myers stack and you want to grab Mac Jones. But for all of you in redraft leagues, there's so many other quarterbacks that I would take in the middle rounds, early rounds, uh, so many other quarterbacks in the late rounds that Mac Jones is not really on our radar, especially because he's not going to run the ball at all. Like he's a fine athlete, but you know, he's not running for like 400 yards and a bunch of touchdowns. So no, I don't draft Mac Jones late. Uh, last name on the list, Gus Edwards. This one actually like I feel like thinking about it more, this one makes the most sense of all of these risers. I have probably been a little bit too off on Gus. I mean, the latest reports are, um, and, and nothing's confirmed, but the latest reports are kind of that, you know, Gus has a better chance of returning from the injury uh, a little bit earlier than Dobbins. Both are not locks to start the season, but I would say that like Gus is looking better to be healthy for week one. Uh, but again, neither are a lock and neither of them are going to be, you know, like week 10 until they return. So both be relatively early in the season. But even when both are healthy, like Gus is still a really good running back. He's got a fantastic, you know, yards per carry for his career. He's a very efficient running back, very good running back. Like he's a great player. So even when both are healthy, like for how much this team is going to run the ball, like their current ADPs, I mean, pretty far apart like Dobbins is going around nine to ten rounds earlier than Gus and so I agree with this one like Gus is a solid late round pick he should be rising he should continue to rise um I know they drafted was it batty like they didn't draft anyone that's gonna be like significant competition and like I said before like they, they can have three running backs they're gonna run the ball a ton this season especially if they continue to not sign a wide receiver we'll talk about that a little bit when we go over like Julio uh, Odell and, and Fuller like I think one of them is probably going to sign with Baltimore but you know this team is not airing it out you know they're going to run a ton and you know Gus is a really good running back so I agree with this rise I think Gus should continue to rise solid player um, how about the followers though uh, we'll start off with you know our classic 30 minutes 30 minutes wow 30 seconds to a minute take on the Browns um, every week they're part of the followers but it's gotten to the point where in recent weeks like I just I don't think they should continue to fall. Like, it does seem like Watson's going to be suspended for the full year. But also, we don't technically know that. it could. It's the NFL, right? They're very inconsistent with punishments. What if it came out that it's only 10 weeks, something like that, and now you get to close the season, Watson with all of these guys? Like, I think even if we assume that he's going to be suspended for the entire year, I think Bell and Joku Cooper have fallen too much. I think at this point, like, even if... They don't bring someone in and Jacoby Brissett is a quarterback for the whole season. They have fallen to the point where it's kind of egregious. You're getting them very, very late values. They're still going to be involved in the offense. I'm not buying reports that it's like Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones is a clear one too. I think that Bell is going to be pretty early in the season, the number two wide receiver on this offense. And so I think, I mean, cratering. Bell and Joker are creating an ADP. Cooper is like a pretty nice value. is the very clear number one. So Again, even though I do think Watson will miss the whole season, you can still target Browns players because they're at a value, even projecting uh, Jacoby Brissett to be the starting quarterback. So I don't get it. They keep being followers. I think now is the time where we definitely capitalize. You guys saw like two weeks ago, I did a team on underdog where I drafted 
uh, Chubb, Cooper, Bell, and Jacoby Brissett. Just assuming Brissett would be the starting quarterback. You can get that even cheaper now, so maybe I should go out and do another one of those. Uh, after Browns players, John Mechie falling about half a round. Eh, who, who really cares? I mean, we, we weren't targeting Mechie. Um, not a lock to be healthy, even if he was healthy. You've got other guys that can command targets on that team. And like I said, it's the Texans before. Like, there are really good teams with players we can target. We don't need to be targeting like the second or third best wide receiver, probably third best wide receiver this season on the Texans. So don't pay attention to that one. Uh, Traylon Burks, though, down another half a round. I've said for a few weeks now, Woods should be going earlier than Traylon Burks. I would take Woods straight up over Burks. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, it was like three rounds difference. Now it's about 20 spots. So less than two rounds ADP difference between Traylon Burks and Woods. I do think come like mid-August, uh, unless it reports come out that Burks is looking like absolutely incredible. I think come mid-August, Burks and Woods, maybe Woods never overtakes him, but they're going to be within a round. So it's about 20 spots right now. I think, you know, the ADP is going to continue to drop a little bit for Burks, rise a little bit for Woods uh, for the exact same reasons we talked about in previous weeks. Uh, so we don't need to go over it a whole, a whole lot. But yeah, target Robert Woods. He's a fantastic pick right now. Uh, Kamara down another five spots now an early third round pick I said last week that my new rankings have him as a late third round pick so I think that you know we're going to see a little bit more um, a little bit more of a fall I don't think he can make it to the fourth though like when you get into that late third you know that's the range where you've locked up like two very very good players plus you've got another pick coming up right after that like that's a range where you can assume a decent amount of risk and it's not risk that like, Oh, he's not going to play this year. Like a six game suspension is probably coming. So you're probably going to miss him for six games, but you know, you're going to have him for the rest. And you know, I just think that's a really good spot. you got that. Would, the late third would be, you got a late first round pick early second round pick. So you've probably got one pretty solid running back. Then your early fourth round pick is going to be probably a really good wide receiver. I would guess. And so if you've got a solid running back, maybe solid tight end with that maybe two solid wide receivers like i think that's a good spot for kamara so i think he's going to stabilize around the late third round uh early third round is fine if you want to go with like a jonathan taylor um mike evans and then alvin kamara stack and then hope that he's suspended for six games to start the year and then to close the year you have jonathan taylor and alvin kamara with an elite wide receiver that would be a really nice start uh but i i think you know he should be a late third round pick that's kind of what i think for him um, then, like I alluded to before, Julio's down, Odell's down, Fuller's down. Like I said, you know, to start the offseason, basically every week that each one of these guys does not sign with a the team, they're going to move down a few spots. People are going to panic, but they really shouldn't. I mean, my, my guess, like if you said, do, what is the most likely outcome? Do all of them sign or none of them sign? Like, I would think all of them. I think all of them are going to be on a team. Like I said before, Baltimore, you know, they're looking for a veteran. They're looking for someone to come in um, and be like a veteran presence on the team, not necessarily need to command a ton of targets. I think that Julio and Fuller kind of fit the bill for that just because Odell, I mean, he's not going to be back until like December. And so they could go there, but I don't think that's really what they want to do. Um, my order for taking these guys is probably Fuller, then Julio, then Odell. Um, cause like I said, you know, Odell is going to be, it's gonna be a long time before he's back and in between Fuller and Julio. It's like, I think Julio has a better chance of signing with a team, but assuming like a, a neutral outcome for both players, um, like a neutral team landing spot, I think I would just rather in fantasy have Will Fuller. I think he's going to be the better player at this point in their respective careers. Um, but Julio is probably more likely to sign with a team. So it doesn't really matter which one you take. Um, all of them are just late round flyers, but if they keep falling in ADP, I mean, Hey, if you, it's really worth it taking them in like the final round of your draft because they have a ton of upside. Whereas some players going that late, their upside is a little bit capped. Last player we'll go over today is Daryl Williams. I think people are starting to come off of him because of that report that came out that, you know, Benjamin's looked good. He's getting a lot of praise uh, from the coaching staff there. I'm not saying that, you know, Benjamin can't be good this season, isn't good, won't be the backup. Like, I'm not saying any of that. Just that, like, you know, reports right now, who really cares? Like, it's a lot of just fluff. It's a lot of, you know, people hyping players up and there's not a whole lot to it. And so I'm going to wait till mid-July into August. If they're still saying that, if he's working as a two, then I'll change my mind. I'll change my rankings. As of right now, I kind of need to see that happen. I think that the ranking should be obviously Connor first, but then Williams and then, you know, Benjamin pretty clearly uh, behind him. So, 
those are the uh, list changes this week as far as ADP is concerned. We're going to start getting a lot more changes come mid-July into August as we get camps, as we get preseason games. But tracking the changes right now is still very important because, you know, uh, a lot of movement right now is reactionary and we should be taking advantage when that is the case. I'll be back Monday with another episode of Mock Draft Monday, Tuesday, live, sleeper draft, 8 p.m. Eastern, then Wednesday, optimal late round draft strategy. And remember, auction pricing suggestions are now live on the site and three wide receiver rankings are probably going to be live as well. But if not, they'll be up very soon. So check that out if you've not done so already. Now, my friends, is into this one. Hope you all enjoy. If you did, how about hitting the like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.